everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, licensed professional counselor, and welcome to my channel as we are reviewing Ready to Love, season five-ish, uh, Potomac, episode two, Blind Dates. Uh, but before we get into it, of course, gonna ask for you to subscribe to my channel as we are doing mental health information, uh, learning and growing from a centered place, right? Oh, let us start off with the mixer. I uh, think start off with the mixer and the brunch uh, that they have in the morning. And uh, the, the cast finds out that Tommy is inviting two new guests uh, to join the cast. Uh, so they'll be meeting them via blind dates. And he chooses Ace to meet with Cornelius and Laverne to meet uh, Com Carmen, but the only caveat is that Laverne has to be quiet. So there were some cute moments to note at the brunch. Uh, one between uh, Wiley and Dakaya. Um, she was calling him out for his his touch, and, you know, touching her hand and his his uh, Wiley eye. I thought that was funny. And then the second cute moment was with Clifton and Joy. After the brunch was over, he was like, I need to get five, my five minutes with you. And I'm going to get my five minutes with you. She's like, well, come on. And she was kind of testing and playing with him. Like, oh, I'm ready to go. He's like, no, no, I need you to come on and sit down and let's have our time. And she talked about how, you know, in any dating situation, most, that's what women are looking for. And even, you know, even men are, are looking for, trying to look for a connection, a better connection and looking to see, is this person really here for me? Like, wanting to connect with me and he's truly showing that in his intent of saying hey what's happening so uh the first blind date laverne takes out carmen and she's 43 she says she's a workaholic and she doesn't have much time to date and that she's not good at flirting um but this date says otherwise carmen um so <laughs> this date is really funny to me both of them were kind of one up in each other she's like i work five times I work out five times a week. He's like, oh, I'll work out six times a week. And then um, they, we find out they both have Navy uh, background, both were divorced and have children. And he is, he asked if she could check her man. And and, and she said, yes. Uh, and then he asked her to like act out what that would look like. And he liked the whispering in the ear moment. Um, and also there was a little bit of, of touching that went on as well got a little handsy uh, he said that he um, has a strong personality he said he has a strong personality and and he's looking for someone to kind of help him you know reel it in when he needs to or to remind him to do that I'm like sir are you able to do that for yourself Oh, okay. You need someone else to do that for you. Okay. Uh, but she says she does have a strong personality as well, but she's playing it cool because, you know, it's just the first day. Um, we see Ace meets with Cornelius, and I'm like, oh, no. I thought we were done with Cornelius, but it's a new Cornelius, so. <laughs> and he seems uh, like a cool guy. Um, he is trying to get himself together. He talked about uh, being in a mar married before. He missed that he was the problem in the marriage. Um, you know, it's nice to hear that. I think that it takes, of course, it takes two people, um, you know, in a marriage, but, um, it's grateful that he sees the part that he plays in the marriage and he took some time off, got some therapy, and now he's ready to have some little cornbreads or corn, because he's cornbread, so maybe some corn muffins, that's what he said. Ace said that he had some charming eyes, and that made Cornelius blush. He said, oh, I've never heard that before. So that was a little cute moment. Um, he's looking for a long-term connection, and he talked about, you know, how therapy really helped him. And he said he feels like every black person needs therapy because they have a PTSD from just being black. Um, I, I, there's some truth in that statement. I could, I could go on, but you know, we're reviewing rated love. So I need to stay on task, <laughs> but, um, a stated, uh, or shared that, you know, she really tapped into meditation and yoga and how that's helped her manage her mental health. Then we see Cornelius is, you know, saying that, you know, affection is very important to him. He's very sexual. Um, and that he, you know, and so she said, you're going to grab me up. He said, oh yeah, I'll grab you up and start naming body parts. Uh, now Cornelius, um, he gets two points for me because at the end of the date, 
you know, and after they exchanged numbers, he hugged her. And he hugged her in a very respectful way. Uh, normally, what, what we see or what I do see is that men sometimes will hug right above, um, or right in the lower back area, right above someone's rear end. And that can sometimes um, be a boundary crossing. You don't know someone's personal space and their level of comfort with you, whether it was a good date or a bad day, you might feel it was a good day, but the other person's like, mm, I'm not going to see this person again. So he was just being respectful. And so you get, you get, you get some brownie points. Right, we'll see how this goes. Um, Joy, uh, she has a date with Paul. And I was curious about this. I was like, really? Okay. What it seems like maybe the production, I don't know if it's the cast members this season or if it's production. It seems like the cast members are taking more time to get to know other people. And so, uh, Joy, she she says she wants to keep her options open. And Paul has her favorite drink waiting for her. I thought that was so nice. Um, and Paul asks, you know, how does she feel about selling down? Because he knows she's a... She's a professional singer. She's an artist. And she said that, you know, she she does like to move around a lot. And just the thought of being stuck in one spot is just a little, a little unsettling for her. And, and Paul said, you know, that he's looking for a commitment. He's looking for marriage. And Joy in her confession said that her connection is strong is some, stronger somewhere else. Like, Paul's nice, but my connection is somewhere else. Uh, Dakaya had a little date with Clifton, and Clifton wanted to get a chance to explore his connection with her because they never had time alone. It kept getting interrupted by people last episode. Uh, and Dakaya, I noticed something about her. She just leads with humor, uh, and it's it's funny. She is funny, so it works. He talked about, you know, he said he liked her camo, and she said, well, I'm about, you know, I'm going to fight for you, you know, so... <laughs> She is funny to me. Uh, so Clifton asked about premarital sex and Dakaya said, yes, please. Clifton seems to, you know, truly communicate that sex is a huge priority for him uh, and gets very excited about Dakaya saying that her sex drive is high. Uh, that seemed to spark his interest. And we see that he has a, a signature move of picking, picking uh, her up. Or he did the same thing with Joy at the end of the brunch. And so I think he's trying to communicate a lot of things there while doing that. Like one, his strength, like I'm strong, right? He's trying to communicate protection that um, I can keep you safe, right? But and secure. And then he's also um, trying to communicate a lot of things too sexually there. Um, so depending on how Joy and Dakaya receive that, that's up to them, but it seems like I think both of them enjoy what he's trying to communicate to them. So we see a group date with Paul, Cornelius, Sabrina, Tiffany, and Precious. And they are playing ping pong. And I was like, this is a weird activity for a group date, but okay. Um, Paul and Precious are having a little moment uh, at the table. And Precious asks Paul if he feels like um, he can be a little rigid and guarded. Yes, he can. Uh, <laughs> but let's let's find out what he said. Uh, he said, you know, I'm a very tactful person. She said, okay, I like that word. Um, and he said, you know, some people like a little sugar before you get to the salt. But, you know, you know, he, she said, well, how, how do you think I like it? And she, she put a little flirt in there. And he said, well, you know, I think you like it rough. And I'm like, oh, my God, sir. I, he, it took it right to sex. I like this. This date should. This episode should be called sex. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he did get a laugh. He did get a laugh. Uh, so Cornelius uh, is talking with Sabrina and Tiffany, and they're grilling him back to back. It seems to be a little bit overwhelming for him. So then he kind of starts talking to Tiffany, and Sabrina goes to sit with Paul and Precious. Uh, so she asked, you know, how he felt about marriage, what he's looking for. And he said, you know, some, some people believe in it. Some people don't. And Tiffany said, well, what do you want for you? Like, what do you believe in? And he said, well, you know, it could be whatever you want to call it. You know, uh, we don't have to put a name on it. You know, it could be a long term relationship. And and that's that. And she said, well, I want marriage. And and. 
that kind of rubbed Cornelius the wrong way. We don't know, you know, his past situation, his marriage may be tainted his ideas or thoughts about it. Um, I think marriage can, can work and can be beautiful. Uh, and at the same time, if you've had some pretty bad or negative experience from it, it can make you hesitant to to want to recommit to something like that again, right? And so I think with Tiffany's forceful nature and communicating what she what she wants, which she has every right to communicate what she wants, but I think in it's all about too how you communicate it. And if he's like a little bit on the fence and she's forceful with it, then he feels like, oh no, that I pass. Um, I wonder if she said, well, you know, marriage is something that's really important to me. And and to see how, you know, to see how that connection may have developed. Uh, but I understand her also, too, wanting to make sure she communicates her intent so she doesn't set herself up to be in a relationship that's not going to go any further and it's not going to give her what she wants. Uh, Sabrina did have a one a one on one with uh, Cornelius, but we didn't get to see it really. Um, Tiffany, she joined Paul and Precious, and Paul asked her, "So, do you like spoken word uh, poetry?" And she's like, "No, you know, I'm not really into it." He said, "Well, if you were," and I'm like, "Paul, that's next subject. What's happening?" So, if you were, um, what would you, what would you call that word? And I'm like, "Paul, what, what are you trying to get?" Uh, that's 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 my question to Paul. My question to Paul is, what are you what are you trying to get from from this question? What what's tell me, help me out. And the second question of when you go to the grocery store, and you're getting you know you're cashing out, do you talk to the cashier? Do you say hello? And she say yes. Okay, so you know now that she is maybe an outgoing person or is a mannerable person, right? Um, I just would, I really want to know, like, what, what is he hoping to, to get from these questions? What are these questions really telling him, you know, going to tell him? Um, so I see his method. He doesn't want to rush the process, right? So I want to give Paul the benefit of the doubt, right? Um, I see his method. He, he wants to get to know the person without going through the process of dating. I mean, dating can be exhausting you know getting to know a person spending time with them um and i think you know paul just wants to get that information out but i think you can can do that with letting it flow letting the conversation flow uh, the question sometimes comes off a bit awkward and confrontational and with some people's systems you know and what they've experienced some of their protectors it might really rub them the wrong way um, it might really rub them the wrong way and and make them feel like he's trying to force information out of them that they're not willing to share yet. So we'll see how it goes. You know how I say. So the next date is with Carmen, um, Ace, Clifton, Joy, and Tori. And they go to do virtual golf. Or I guess it's kind of like arcade thing because they had a foosball table there as well. And Clifton is excited about Carmen's curves. And then he sees her contacts and he's like, maybe not. Um, <laughs> he said that every time he looks at her, he feels like baby Jesus is looking at him. I cannot. Carmen meets Troy. She said that he's handsome, but he's, she's, you know, dreadlocks is her thing. Uh, that's okay, Carmen. Uh, they're so they're playing golf but nobody's hitting the ball and they're you know playing around with that joy which i thought was interesting joy she suggests that carmen teach and help clifton how to hit the ball and so she goes up there and she's she says she doesn't know how to flirt but she's definitely doing a good job in this situation she's like hold my hair because i want him to know that my hair is real and she's you know positioning herself so you know that was interesting uh tori is also admiring uh joy in her jumpsuit right and so they're playing some golf together carmen asked clifton about his last relationship and he said that he has been uh, he's been divorced for two years and, you know, nothing serious since then. He wanted to take some time to heal um, and get himself together. And she said, well, let me see your muscles. I'm like, where did, how did we jump from healing to muscles? Um, 
So she likes a little show and tell. You know, she was touching on Laverne last uh, date. This this date she wants um, she wants Clifton to show her his muscles, and Clifton likes so show and tell too because he said which one, uh, which creates a moment of laughter. <laughs> For sure. Um, Ace, you know, she's seeing that people are connected. So she jumps and goes to the bar and kind of sits by herself, gets herself a drink. And um, and Tori and, and Joy have this very interesting interaction at the foosball table. And he's like, so how important is sex to you? And she's like, oh, it's very important. And then the conversation goes to a place um, where he's alluding to his manhood and and the size of it and joy um you know joy stated that you know she's open to to a date with tori but doesn't feel like there's going to be any substance there what can happen when people lead with sex in a conversation and dating situation uh it can make people feel like it could communicate to them that that is what they are wanting um i don't think that i don't I don't know that to be true in Tori's case or even in Clifton's case, right? Uh, but it just communicates that. Um, so I think it's important to have a conversation about sex. I also think the timing is, is important. Uh, so Clifton, he, he notices that Ace is, is alone by the bar. So he went over to check on her to see if she's okay. And she said, yeah, I'm fine. I just didn't want to impose anybody. I want to respect uh, you know, everybody's connection. So I'm just going to sit over here and be by myself. And she's like, I'm not, I'm not sad or anything like that. And so he just gave her some reassurance that she wasn't imposing. But she said, I just want to support everybody's journey to love. I thought that was really nice. Um, you know, in one instance, I'm like, oh, that's great. She's securing herself. She's peaceful, you know, no matter what happens, um, you know, in the situation, this date, it's a, it's a dating game, you know, for lack of a better word, a strategy happening. Um, uh, but she's moving just in a, in a different energy where it's peaceful for her. Um, and so I wonder for everybody else where it's a chess piece and, and people interrupting people's dates and all of that, um, if she might get lost, you know, in the sauce with that. So Clifton and Joy have a little recap uh, moment at the end of the date, you know, just to make sure they're good because um, Carmen attempted to break, you know, the physical boundary. Um, and he said, you know, he was mindful to respect her and respect you know, actually both of them. And she said, you know, I wasn't worried. Um, so it, it communicated to him, you know, that she's, she's securing herself. I think that that also, um, you know, attracted Clifton more to joy because uh, he wants to know that she won't be jealous or there won't be insecurities that he will have to manage. So we have the gentleman's lounge and side note, Demetrius can dress very well. This spackle blue suit that he had on, I was like, okay, the you had the plum, the first, um, you had the plum suit the first episode, and then the brunch, you had the pinstripe. I said, okay, this man can dress. Okay, just a little side note. Now, uh, Laverne um, said that, you know, he's very excited about Carmen. He thinks she's the one, and Tommy said, whoa, slow down. It's, it's, it's just the second week, like, you know, relax. Um, Tori said that Sabrina and Joy are his top. Clifton said that Dakaya and Joy were his top. Paul said that he could tell that Dakaya has this boss lady demeanor and that, you know, after work that she, she likes to be thugged out and he likes that. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm just, I'm confused about what that means. Wiley said that Dakaya and Tiffany were in his top. And so at the bottom, Laverne said that he and Sabrina were on the phone and she said she had to take a call and he never and she never got back to him. And I said, hmm, I wonder if he was talking too much. Uh, Paul said that Tiffany was in his bottom. Clifton also said Tiffany was in his bottom. And then Cornelius uh, stated that, well, she did say that she's looking for a husband, period. And they did the camera cut to Wiley, and, and you could tell his face had definitely a reaction to that information. So he's young, he's 32. You know, marriage might not be something that's a huge priority for him right now. Um, Tori said Carmen because he didn't really feel a connection. I'm like, oh, it's because it's of the dreads. 
just because of her dress. She doesn't like it. Um, Demetrius said that Dakaya was because he said, you know, she's he doesn't think she could take the boss lady head off. And Paul's like, no, she's thugged out. She is thugged out. Um, <laughs> Wiley said Ace because he said he couldn't get past the yoga. He said that's all I all I could get from her. And Laverne went for went to bat for her. He said she's she's everything. She's everything. And so, um, Tommy, he got a little bit, um, overstimulated a bit by Paul and, and Laverne. And he just, that was, that was the funny moment for me. He said, y'all are a lot and I need a moment. We see that, um, the gentlemen are looking to either dismiss Ace or Tiffany. Wiley takes out Ace and Paul takes out Tiffany. Um, Wiley gets to know Ace a little bit more. He said, man, I wish I, you know, I had a chance to understand you and get to know you better and I'm seeing more from you. And, you know, the fellas, that's really just what we were looking for, just a chance to get to know you more. Now, Paul and, T and Tiffany have a, a little spirited date. There's some fireworks there. Um, as he's asking more questions and she's getting annoyed, closing her eyes, having to meditate and pray. <laughs> and, um, and, Paul tells her that she's not ready to love and she has a hard reaction to that. I really wonder about if her reaction would have been different if Wiley talked to her. Because Wiley and her were connecting. She was very excited about him. And if he were to take a moment and said, hey, I'm really liking our connection. I'm really liking our connection. And at the same time, a lot of the guys are are saying that, um, you know, they, they don't feel a connection with you. And I also want a chance to continue to, to meet other people. And I heard that you also from, you know, from the other gentlemen, I heard that you feel that marriage is really important to you. And right now I'm still, you know, learning and kind of taking things slow. So I don't want to slow you down. And I want to respect your desire for marriage and, you know, for a husband. And so with considering all of that, that you're not ready to love, I wonder how her reaction would have been if that was said. Um, because again, she's like confused. I have this really great connection with Wiley and I'm getting told I'm not ready to love. I also feel like Paul may have not have been the, the best messenger, just in my, my opinion. But we'll see as things continue to go. It seems like the way things are flowing this season that they're bringing two new people on as the, se as the episodes continue. So You know how it is in these ready to love streets. It's complicated and interesting for sure. So, of course, please, please remember to subscribe, like the video to help me out in these algorithm streets for sure. And I will see you guys next time. Be cool, be calm, be centered. Peace.